Hello and welcome to another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson and today our guest is Tina Norris, the new Hudson Public Library Director. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, Ms. Norris, uh, first let's start a little bit about you. Now uh, we're going to ask about the Hudson Library situation. Understand you've been on the job two mo about two months? About two months, yes. Okay. Well let's get on your background, uh, family, where you were born and raised, that type of thing. Okay. Um, I was born and raised in Fresno, California. My parents are raisin farmers, so I grew up on a vineyard. Most people think vineyard and think wine, but we grew grapes for raisins. Um, my husband and I and our four children moved here, well, we moved to Minnesota in 2000. Okay. Um, so I spent about 14 years in Minnesota before I moved to Tennessee to take a directorship in Cannon County, and now I'm back. Okay. Um, you also have a connection, though, to the area. Prior to that move uh, to Minnesota in 2000, uh, you did undergrad? Yes, I got my undergrad degree at the University of Wisconsin River Falls. Go Falcons. All right. And I won't say exactly what year, but what, what de decade was the? Oh, actually, it was recent. Oh, I, it was I, recent? Yes, it was. I went to um, Fresno State out in California, um, started my degree, and then I had my family and then decided I wanted to be a librarian, so I needed to get my master's degree, so I had to finish what I started. So I graduated from River Falls in 2012. And the, the master's degree? I got that from the University of South Carolina. Go Gamecocks. Okay. <laughs> it's been a rough year. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's your um, educational background and your family. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about your work experience. So you were in Delano, Minnesota? Yes. And I, what position was that? I was a library assistant okay. in uh, Delano for the Great River Regional Library System. So it's a pretty big library system. All right. And um, so any idea of like, how, you, how do you measure the size of a library system? Is it circulation? Is it customers in the door or um, budget? For, for Great River, actually, it covers five counties and 32 libraries. So it's a regional library system. Um, library systems are different in every single state. Tennessee was actually very similar to Wisconsin, um, but Minnesota, you have 32 libraries in one library system. It's a consolidated system. Okay. Wisconsin is federated, um, so we have the Indian Head Federated Library System, and we are a part of that with Hudson, but we're an independent library, and Tennessee was the same way. Okay, so a library assistant for more than 13 years, Mm -hmm. and then a director for about 18 months. About 18 months. And what, why the change from Tennessee back to the Midwest? Um, the Midwest appreciates libraries much more than Tennessee. I, I will say that. Um, but it was also because of family. I really wanted to get back up here to my children. Okay. Um, so you have at least two of your grown children are still in, in this area? Yes, they are. Okay. Uh, Great. Well, and um, so that is a little bit about your experience. Um, th so the size of the library in Tennessee and the population is pretty similar or? Yes, no? Very similar. And as far as the staff, um, how, how many staff? I actually had much less staff in Tennessee. Okay. I had about half. I have 23 here. There were 12 in Tennessee. About half. About so half. you see a, a little bit more support for public libraries? Much more support for public All libraries. Right. Now, so you've been on the job about two years, or two months. Two months. <laughs> and your first full year's budget was really pretty much already determined. Mm -hmm. So that's 2016? 2016. 2016. And you have attended a couple board members meetings, meetings. Are, mm -hmm. already? And so what do you see as kind of your first um, uh, opportunity, I guess, to, to get something done? Well, the library board actually worked with um, some consultants from St. Paul, and there is a strategic plan in place. Funding is a big issue in libraries wherever you go. And so one of the things we're focusing on are building public-private relationships to build our funding to be able to keep promoting and doing all of the great things libraries do. 
Um, we just mailed out our first annual fundraiser appeal letter um, that should be hitting mailboxes any day. Um, so we're going to be raising funds so that we can do all kinds of different programming. Um, I would like to see us get more literacy programs going. I would like to see adult programming, um, computer classes for adults, things like that. We have some really great teen programming that's going. I'd like to see some STEM or STEAM programs, um, which are, in case you don't know what that acronym is, STEAM is Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Mathematics. So I'd like to see those kinds of go programs going on that help support educational achievement. So we're supporting the schools by providing additional opportunities for kids to come in and learn. So have you had experience uh, you know, in partnerships with school districts, for instance? In Tennessee, yes, I did. Um, we were building it. It was um, pretty new. The library had just been remodeled, and so there wasn't a whole lot of programming going on. But that was one of the things that I went in and did. We worked with the schools. Um, we did a battle of the books among the school districts. They're very competitive in sports. They wanted to add an academic aspect to that competitiveness. That was a really big hit. Um, we did some teacher trainings in our community room uh, during the school, off, or I guess in the summer. So the teachers came and used our facilities as an alternate site and that was great. Um, the summer reading program, we worked hand in hand with the school to get kids signed up so they didn't have that summer slide or so it wasn't so great. Well I know from the aspect of you know in public education for sure that get, instilling that love of reading early is kind of a common goal with uh, libraries too. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about, well, your knowledge going into this job as far as what the situation was here in Hudson. It's been uh, kind of pretty well politicized and publicized with some tensions between the county level uh, and the different municipalities that support the Hudson Area Library. So um, how did that uh, play out in your decision to take this job as opposed to seeing that and turning around wanting to run away? Um, I will say this. I love a good challenge. I believe in focusing on the positive. In Tennessee, I came from a library system that just cut their budget. And we're talking about a budget of just under $200,000. Okay. So to cut a budget like that, and I mean, our book budget was $10,000. So we really didn't have much of a budget. So the challenge was there. Um, and before I left, I was able to get my staff raises, um, worked with the foundation to get a grant for programming. So we were able to keep those things in the budget and, and build that and keep it going for this coming year. But um, I wanted a a bigger challenge and, and I think this is. I think there are great opportunities here. I think it's building relationships and communicating our purpose, making sure everyone knows that we have a positive focus and we have a lot of great things to offer here in Hudson. You know, uh, public budgets are tight. I mean, you know, I'm currently on the school board and understand, you know, taxpayers are looking always for ways to keep um, uh, the budget's down, and so I think it gets back to what you said before about public-private partnerships, and how do you feel about our friends of the Hudson Area Library? I think the friends are an asset. Friends of libraries everywhere are assets. Um, they are actually not our fundraising arm. Our foundation is. Okay. When they redid uh, the strategic plan, the foundation rewrote their mission so now they will be our fundraising arm. And a lot of libraries have done that. Um, in North Carolina, the library was going bankrupt. They formed a foundation. They are doing an amazing job. Um, there, and that's been true in many different places. So it's possible. It, it's just knowing what your plan is and going for it. With uh, all the media competing for uh, 
the attention of youth and you know with our faster and faster paced lives um, is the notion of public libraries kind of outdated and uh, do you see the future being uh, diminishing as far as facilities ne needed for for that mission absolutely not I and see why not? I see libraries as the heart of their community most of the time when people go into a community that they're thinking about moving into they look at their library they look at how their library is funded they look at what's going on at the library the libraries offer something that's really not available anywhere else they are one of the only places where you can have no money or a million dollars and you will be treated the same. We have programs for all ages. We don't discriminate. It doesn't matter who you are. You are welcome to come in and use our services. And I think there's always going to be a need. Books aren't going away. Um, one of the things that people really thought that with downloadable books, the library would become irrelevant, and that hasn't been the case. So have, how has the use of the library been? Have you looked at the trends in Hudson here particularly? Um, overall, trends with libraries in general go up and down. Um, with the recession in 2008, libraries boomed because people couldn't afford to go out and buy their books or movies. Um, about 2011, 2012, libraries all saw diminishing circulation, but there was still an increase in use. It was just a shift of how they were being used. Downloadable books did come into play, but people using our technology, attending programs, so visits went up where circulation went down. So. Tell me about, you've already mentioned now the partnership with the uh, potential partnership with school districts, but before we went on camera, you also talked about the vocational aspect to libraries and uh, economic development and so forth. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, there are many libraries, and I would love to see this in Hudson, but where people come in and libraries can be an incubator for small business. It's tough to start a small business. People can't always afford the equipment they need, but if a library has the computers and the books and resources available for them to find out what they need, to learn what they need to start their business, we're there. For people who don't have a computer at home but want to apply for a job, most jobs require online applications now, so we're there for them. If somebody wants to learn online classes, you can go to the library and use the library to take your online classes. We have quiet spaces for studying. So um, the library has so much potential to benefit the community. We just need to make sure everyone knows what you can do at the library. So um, if, how many terminals are there, computer? Um, well, first of all, do you have PCs or do you have tablets? What do you have? We have um, desktops and we have laptops so we have both we don't really have any tablets right now but we have which kind of makes sense they're a little bit more portable than yeah. the others and, and so. we have Wi-Fi throughout the library so you can bring your own um, technology tablets. and okay. use it we have study rooms we have rooms for meetings and we do have those booked often um, we have 18 I think we have 18 total. So we have 12 and 6. Okay, so it's pretty rare for all of those to be checked out at one time. It is. Often I've, I step out of my office and there's maybe one or two of the desktops that aren't in use, but the laptops are less. But a lot of people like to go in because that's a separate room and it's quiet. Okay. But um, I see them in use every day. So uh, having been in a librarian since the turn of the century with 15 <laughs> years um, mm -hmm. and I remember our firm uh, went to computers I think it's 1999 because that's when we had um, a lot of use uh, it sat on my desk before that until there was um, more use of email email didn't really get going to the late uh, 90s so in that 15 years do you see a, a continued trend then for the, that's going to continue for the next 10, or is the next 10 going to be far different from the last 15? 
you know, I think it's going to be pretty similar, but the technology is always changing. So I could say that to you today and tomorrow something earth shattering can come out in technology. That's one thing for libraries. We, we need to always be monitoring those emerging trends. But right now, and that's the thing, we can be cutting edge, but your average Joe that comes in to use the library is going to be looking for the basic technology that they need in their everyday lives. Yeah, more and more uh, companies are going to, yeah, online and being able to do it, and not everyone has com the most up-to-date computers. Exactly. The computer speed, but the Wi-Fi here at Hudson Public Library, good? Yes, it is. <laughs> And it is. Good. And so have you said, of your 23 paid staff, how many are full-time, part-time? What's the... Um, are they pretty much all part-time? They're pretty the, much all part-time. We have three full-time staff, including myself. All right. And I saw in your library director job description that they posted in April of this year, I suppose, for the people who were applying. They said uh, about 15 percent, or, or I'm sorry, 35 percent of the job is kind of administrative. Um, uh, work at 20% service, it says 10% service promotion, 20% facilities management, which was um, the reality as compared to the, what they had originally thought it was 5%. Why so much on facilities management? Facilities management is just really making sure everything's okay with the building. Um, you know, I do monitor the janitor who's doing a great job. Um, if there are problems with the building, I get to make those phone calls, so it, it does take a little more time. Um, if we need new shelving, if we need something new, that's all part of managing the facility. Okay. So it, it does. And speaking of facilities, the fact that you share a building with the police department, mm -hmm. uh, is that a good partnership? They're great neighbors. <laughs> yeah. It makes you feel a little more safe? It does. Right. And then the, the last area of your job says essential competencies and knowledge, which includes the leadership communications bit to it, um, about 15% of that. So uh, you're not at the front desk all the time, I mean, greeting customers, but you're no. coordinating, and that's basically... I am. I am. I, I'm making sure that we're a team, that we're all on the same page. We all, all want to serve our patrons. Um, so I'm kind of a motivator. Know, and building that team spirit. Both internally and then externally, because you're, you're the face of the organization. Yes. You're promoting the Hudson Public Area Library. So what do you see as uh, some of the groups that you might go speak to? If people watching this say, well, we'd want to maybe have her come speak, or who would you expect? Um, well, I, I will be speaking to the Rotary Club uh, in February. Um, Which one, the noon or the... Morning. The noon. Okay. <laughs> the noon. Um, I was planning to speak to the Kiwanis on Tuesday morning, but after the commute on Monday, they decided we wouldn't do that. Um, okay. So different groups like that. I, wherever I'm invited, I, if, if it's worth promoting the library, I will be there. Um, I don't want to say I'll go anywhere because that could get me in trouble. Right. But I mean, if it's going to promote the library, I am happy to talk about libraries. And where do you see the, you mentioned, um, well, having applied for grants in your previous position, do you see grant applications and grant support, something that needed here in Hudson as well? I think it's an important avenue to look at. Um, libraries, the funding, it's just, it's competitive, and so you need to look at all your opportunities. And there are a lot of really good grants out there. Um, in Tennessee, we did, it was a community foundation in Murfreesboro that we were able to get the grant through. So that was great. Um, Dollar General does great grants down in Tennessee. So local businesses, those can be sponsors for different programs. There are a lot of different avenues for getting funds, raising funds, but it's a matter of chasing them down right. and presenting and making your case. I, do you, uh, we mentioned the paid staff, what about volunteers? About how many roughly volunteers and are you looking for more and what areas could people serve? We actually have um, adult volunteers. We also have great teen volunteers that come in 
and work in the afternoons. Um, right now, I, I love volunteers, I, but that's an aspect of the library that I just really haven't gotten around to assessing our need. But absolutely, if someone wants to volunteer at the library, come down and have a talk with us. We'll see what we can do. Um, our volunteers do anything from cleaning the books, wiping them down, especially in the children's area, they get a little grimy, um, to shelf reading, making sure the books are on the shelves in their correct Dewey Decimal order, all those good fun things like that. Um, what else do volunteers do? We have volunteers that help in all different areas of the library. So if um, so, that's kind of an ongoing process, assessing what where the yeah. needs may be specifically. But if people that don't have necessarily time to donate but are looking for money, you have, uh, I think you mentioned your annual appeal is something that just recently kicked off. It did. It just the letters went out, I believe, yesterday. So. They'll be hitting our mailboxes. They'll be hitting the mailboxes, and that's that's our really big first fundraiser with me as the face of the library. Um, the board had already decided and the foundation that 100000 was our goal this year, so we're going to do what we can do, hopefully. Fingers crossed. We will get as close to that as possible. I mean, of course, I'm hoping we get there, but... Right. That's um, great. Well, is there any other aspect to this... Um, that you wanted to be able to have a message for our viewers? Um. We have some great programs coming up in December. Um, okay. Tell San us about those. Santa will be at all of the story times next week. Um, we have some adult programs, craft programs. Um, next week, there's one per week for the next three weeks. Uh, so those are great. Teen programming, everything is on our website. So if, if you want to go look at our website, you'll see what we've got going on. We're going to be doing an adult and teen winter reading program starting January 4th. Um, in January, we also have the Wisconsin Historical Society that's going to bring an exhibit. So Wisconsin History what Exhibit. Is that? It's January, it arrives, and we will have it from January, I believe it's actually January 5th, Tuesday, through March 30th. Oh, great. So for the months of January, most of the month of January, yeah. uh, all of February and, and March. March. Excellent. And uh, so History Buffs will be able to check that yes. out. And in September, we'll have a John Muir exhibit. So that, but, Then our environmentalists will be happy, too. <laughs> all right. Well, great. Well, uh, Tina, it was great to uh, have an opportunity to get to know you. Well, and you. Uh, folks should um, you know, come stop come down to the, the library. library. I guess one thing that we... Um, didn't touch on and wanted to end on a good note was the uh, the city of Hudson announcing that they would increase the funding. I think it was to fifty thousand uh, dollars. Yes, I believe so. So what um, what will you be able to do with the those additional funds from that one municipality? We will be reopening the library on Mondays. Um, we're going to do a little bit of a slow start. We're going to open twelve to six for January and February on Mondays. And beginning March 1st, we will be open 10 to 8 Mondays. And what are your hours on the other days? Um, we are open Tuesday through Thursday, 10 to 8, Fridays 10 to 6, and Saturdays 10 to 3. Okay, great. So, All right. Yeah, please well, come see us. Now they've got their hours, and you mentioned the website. I assume that if they just Google Hudson area, Hudson, Wisconsin area Joint Library, <laughs> They'll be able to Hudson um, HudsonPublicLibrary.org. That's that's, that's it. That's the web address. All right. yep. Excellent. Very simple. All right. Thanks again for being a guest thank on you. the show, and thank you for watching another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. And get down to the Hudson Library and check it out.